Hey everyone, welcome back to the second devlog, and before I go any further, I think it's also important to clarify that I don't believe these things make Blender a bad program, and if we're just talking about free software, Blender is probably the most capable program you're going to be able to get your hands on, no doubt. So it's an extremely impressive piece of software. I can easily see how people that started with Blender um, fell in love with it. But I think that the points that I'm about to list are really important to know if you're coming to Blender from other software like me. And if that's your case, then you're really going to want to know these things. So here we go. Number one, Blender imports and exports everything backwards. And I mean this literally. I mean, here we have a character. You can see that the character is facing forwards. And you can see that the program believes that this is called the front of the character. The program also believes that this side is the left side of the character, and that this side is the right side of the character. This is true in Animator, this is true in Maya, this is also true in Unity. But if we export the exact same model into Blender, the character is literally facing the opposite side in the Z axis. Blender thinks that this is the left side of the character, and it thinks that this is the right side of the character, for some reason. Again, the answer is simply Blender defaults to importing everything backwards, so before you import things, you have to make sure to remind it that forward is forward. I don't know why this is not default, but then again, I don't know why left click is not default either, so I won't ask. Number two, you cannot deselect something by clicking in blank empty space. This might just be a personal thing, but again, in Animator, in Maya and in Unity, if you have something selected and you click in an empty area, it deselects what you were previously selecting automatically. Blender doesn't do that. If you click in an empty space, it's going to remain selected on the last thing you clicked. Number three, you can't edit more than one object at a time. In Animator, once in edit mode, you can edit any object at all times. And you can also see the vertices or points of all objects all the time. In Blender, you can't touch or see the vertices of objects that you didn't select before going into edit mode. So be mindful of that. Number four. Speaking of selection, you can't activate drag select by holding left click. Again, this is pretty standard for all software, but for whatever reason, you can only drag select by activating the drag select tool. So if you're really used to other software, selecting multiple things in Blender might feel like a hassle for a while. Number five. There is no basic cut edge tool in Blender. In Blender, if you want to add a point to an edge somewhere, you have to make a cut through the entire object. This is a major hassle if you are used to a tool that lets you make precise cuts along an edge without adding unnecessary points slashing through the entire object. Number six, no hotkeys to activate manipulators. Um, manipulator visualizers are a classic control method for just about any 3D software, but Blender doesn't have any hotkeys to activate them. Like, at all. If you're used to pressing a hotkey to bring up the manipulator visually, you're just flat out of luck. Blender forces you to click on the icon. Now, I found a way around this. If you manually program your own code into Blender, you can create your own hotkeys to force them in. It's extremely inelegant, but you can then bring up the manipulators without needing to click on the icons. Number seven, the manipulators don't really work well even after you bring them up, especially the rotate one. In other programs, normally you can change rotation and size pretty easily by clicking and dragging an axis. But in Blender, you can see when I try to rotate this object, it won't let me grab an axis. It just moves the object instead every time I try to click, which is weird because I'm pretty sure we're on rotation mode. Number eight, there is no mirror joint tool. In Maya, you can mirror your skeleton by pressing a button. But in Blender, you have to basically copy and paste all the bones you want to mirror, then scale them over in reverse on the x-axis, then you have to manually rotate them back to zero because the rotations will be inversed, and then you have to tell it to rename all the bones to flip left and right. Maya, on the other hand, literally has a button that accomplishes everything I just said in a single click. So that is a bit of a huge downgrade from what I'm used to. Number nine, no editing keyframes from the timeline. There is no way to click on the timeline and cut and paste keyframes. In Maya and in Animator, you can scroll through the animation by clicking on a frame in the timeline. And then you can delete, copy, and paste keyframes from another timeline. 
In Blender, you can't even click on the timeline. You have to scroll through it using this little number thing. And even once you are on the frame you want to edit, you have to cut and paste frames in a separate window called the graph editor. And it's just extremely tiresome and time consuming if you're used to just clicking on the timeline directly and doing all of your keyframe editing in the same window. So those are some of the things that you should really know about Blender before coming from other software. And if that's not enough, I'm really sorry, but I didn't even get to the biggest problem I've found in Blender so far. A lot of the problems that I've just listed are probably more of a personal preference, but the thing that I'm going to talk about next, I'm pretty sure I can say is just objectively bad. But it was such a huge mess that I really needed to give it its own video. So if you join me next video, I'll show you Blender's biggest problem and why it's making me reconsider using the program entirely. I'm, I'm hoping that's not going to be the case after another day, but I mean, cross your fingers. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Again, I really don't mean to be so negative. I really hate being that guy, but I'm hoping that these videos help new users of Blender settle in faster, but I'm also hoping that it helps native Blender users understand why it's so difficult for users from other software to quickly adapt and appreciate the program. So please don't take this the wrong way. Anyway, I hope to see you next video. Until then, thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around. Thank you.